We went to the Dollar Tree store and bought two sheets of foam board and two sheets of cardstock. Take your ruler, measure out 10 inches because it's 20 inches, draw a center line. This will be used in the future. Then you take your tape, take your tape, and I like to put this down on the table that I'm using. Put it down the center. And once you put this down, don't try to pick it back up because it'll rip the foam, the paper right off the foam. Walk it over with my fingers, work it over down the center line. Now you start your next piece from the center line out both directions. You want to make sure you have overlap. You don't need much, but you want some overlap. And again, I use tape. I tape this down so I can get nice and flat. So this last piece, doesn't matter if you overhang a lot, overlap. Line it up with the edge. You want to line it up with this outside edge. So once you've got it all laid out, you come across and you cut down this edge and straight as possible. Always cut it away from yourself. And you end up with fully covered. Okay, so you, once you flip it over, you start at one end and you tape the other direction. Once you get to the end, Keeping note which side you end up on. So the side you stop on, that's going to be the nose because the airflow will go that direction and then your seams won't peel up. They'll peel up the other direction. So you want to make sure that air flows this way. Again, once you get to the end, try to line up the front and follow the factory edge of the tape along the factory edge of the foam board. And we have a finished board ready for our plans. So we downloaded our plans. We laid, our, laid out the first set of plans which is for the body of the plane. On the left side, the one, three, five, the odd numbers, you're gonna see an alignment guide. And that's so you can align the right hand side. Set these down, lining them up, tape them. Take your card stock. First sheet of cardstock. Put it on there. Tape it down. Cut it out. Then you will have a template for moving on to your foam board. When you're cutting out, use a straight edge on the straight pieces. Uh, I like to use scissors on the radiuses. So we've already cut the straight edges with the straight edge. Next, take your scissors. Oh, actually, we taped taped over the edge so we can hold the template to the cardstock, both ends, and then just start cutting. So once you finish cutting it out with the scissors, then you end up with these. You get rid of these. Take the paper templates off and get rid of that. And you have your cardboard permanent template. We went ahead and 
cut these out also these are the other sheets that you're going to get cardstock. cut these out using the cardstock set this up on your foam board remembering which is the front or the nose of the plane you want to get it straight at the back that way you have a flat edge and then you trace it out and then use a straight edge to cut use a knife freehand the radius in the front sometimes you do end up with the board a little bit warped so what we'd like to do is get in the closet and get your canned foods they work great for this Trace. take your marker trace it out and then in the future you can go ahead and use the cardstock for as many as you want Once you've got it traced out, put your cans back over. And you've got the body laid out. Use a straight edge to cut these ends off. Use a knife. So for the elevator, what you're going to want to do is measure three inches from the tail up, mark it, mark it, and use a straight edge. Three inches. Now you do need to decide which is the bottom. So you're going to score along the bottom. Now you've got a scoring mark for your elevator. So the next thing we did was cut out our second cardboard stock cut out the templates for the tail section, the winglets, and our guide. So this is our guide, it's gonna be for the winglets and making sure that our vertical stab and rudder, our vertical pieces are vertical. So you have a choice if you wanna tape these before or after, and you can choose a color, it doesn't really matter which direction you tape them. You see here we chose yellow on both sides. You can have different colors for different sides. It's totally up to you. Now you see this needs to have freedom and move. And that's what helps steer the plane. To get this, you score part way through just before you hit the uh, paper on the other side. So take your straight edge like this. And cut try not to cut the paper and the tape on the other side if you do don't worry about it you can tape it it'll be fine Once you score it then you can break it like that and now you have a bending piece but it will only go up that far so what we need to do is we need to cut a groove in here the way I normally do that I take this, bend it over, and then proceed to cut like this. So I put this up, leave space here, make sure I have lots of blade, and being very careful to stay away from the very edge of it. So we don't want to cut all the way through. We do not want to cut this tape. If you do cut it, it's not a big deal. You can tape back over it. If you're not comfortable with cutting, you can actually sand it. Get a sanding block and sand this. Now once you've got that piece cut, you'll notice now we can go up and down. So as a plane, this is the top of the plane. We do this, we can go up, which we already had, but now we can actually nose down. So that's what we need. So the winglets. The winglets you also want to cut a 45 degree angle because these are going to sit up 45 degrees. Cut these. Use your template. I turn it over on the back. I put the winglet. Yeah, right. 
and I tape it. I put a piece of tape right here, tape both of them. And when you flip it over, when you start gluing, start a little ways in from the edge. Put a nice bead. And you stop before the end. Pick it up, hold your template, and wait for it to set up. Sometimes you have a spare piece. Take a scrap piece and go ahead and spread it out. So next we're going to do the vertical stabilizer. Set it up to the center line that you drew earlier. Check your angles. Make sure they meet. We don't have a gap in here. Go ahead and set up your cans again. Use your guide that you cut out earlier. Set up your guide. So go ahead and glue, you start almost to the edge. Again, make sure you're using your guide for 90 degrees. Now we're going to talk about the additional parts required to finish the plane. So we have the motor a prop adapter and the motor that goes onto the mount. This is a speed control. This is Velcro that will be used to hold down the battery and the uh, speed control. These are the control rods that go on the servos and operate the rudder and the elevator. There are two uh, servos required, one for the rudder, one for the elevator. These control rods connect to the servo by using an easy fastener and the rod goes right through the hole and it's bolted down so it can't move but it is adjustable at the servo. We have two different types of mounts for the airplane. One is a stick mount where the motor sits above the body of the plane and the stick is glued to the bottom of the body. And these sticks are available at Home Depot and you can you buy them at 36 inch length and cut it off to whatever length you need. The, the longer on the body it is, the more support you give the airplane. The other mount type is the flat body mount. And the flat body mount has got slots cut in it to mount the engine or the motor to it. And this is glued directly to the top of the body. It has got down thrust in it. It has down thrust and right thrust mm -hmm. already built into it. That for, doesn't have right oh, thrust. Oh, it doesn't have right thrust. You have to you, you have to cock it. the motor slightly for about three degrees of right thrust. This is the servo holder. The, t the servos fit back to back in the servo holder and screwed into this. They eventually will be glued down to the top of the board. These are the horns, control horns. Is one for the rudder and one for the elevator. It has a stop built into it. So after you attach the control rod, uh, you determine where this is. It's close to the front edge of the moving part on the body and on the rudder as you can to get maximum throw. You'll cut a slice through the body and hot glue this into the body in both cases. So this is going to be your basic plane. Uh, this plane does have the flat body mount on it. It has a 9.5 prop with a 1400 kV motor. Uh, your ESC, your servos. Your servo placement you want to get as far forward with the rods that you have as you can and still be connected to the control horns. As you see right here the control horn is as close to this edge as you can get. We've got the same thing here 
want the front of this to be as close as possible. On the bottom, what we did is we took a couple pieces of foam board, sliced it, glued them together, and then glued it down to the bottom, down the center line. And you can go, you want this for rigidity, it helps it keep from folding this way, bending, and it gives you a grip, something to hold on to, to launch it. Is that it? That's it. Enjoy. Hope you have, have fun. Have fun. You can watch some videos now, and you can see uh, if you like the way it flies. Alright, so I wanted to show you the CG. The CG, we like to keep it about in here, the first inch, past the tip of the winglet, where the curve stops and we have the straight part. Uh, this plane we built it with the stick mount and the stick mount goes all the way back here so it's a little bit more tail heavy than the other planes that we've built so this one we are having to use a 2200 all the way forward uh, if you make this a little bit shorter you'll be able to use a 1600 up front and uh, now we'll show you some flight video
Hi, this is Charles. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Down below, click below, you find the links to the plans, free plans, and links to buy the parts. So we've got the uh, flat plane mount, the stick mount, servo tray, horns. They're all 3D printed and not available anywhere else except from me. Good luck, have fun. Cut. Good.